Welcome back to episode 2 of making procedural tree with Blender's geometry nodes. In previous episode I've created a geometry node setup for generated tree trunk, added displacement settings as well as created instances of branches along the trunk with scale and rotation rules. In this episode I'm going to work on branches and twigs as promised. So let's start. To shape the branches, I could use noise texture displacement in this geometry nodes as I did for the trunk. However, I'm creating instances of the same object and I'm limited with creating variety of shapes and length. So all branches in this case are going to be the same. To bring more variations to the branches, I'm going to instance branches from collections. And for this, I would like to create that collection. So in the outliner, I'll create a new collection and call it Assets. And another one inside called Branches. I will add a new object to the scene and call it Branch 1. With this object selected, I'll create a new geometry nodes and call it Branch Gen. This configuration is going to be very similar to the trunk creation with just a few but very important features. So I'll disconnect the base geometry from the output and bring a curve line primitive. I will set it to direction and give it a reasonable length, around 1.5 meters. I'll resample this curve and add a set position node to displace branch curve with a noise texture. The whole geometry is shifted, so I will fix this with a map range node by setting a target range from minus 1 to 1. I'll drop the scale of the noise and slightly adjust details and roughness. Once again, I will add the max value of the displacement strength to the group input and multiply it by minus 1 for the minimum displacement strength to create consistent range. I will capture a spline parameter factor as an attribute for this branch curve and use map range node to have zero displacement at the bottom and maximum displacement at the top. I will also add minimum value from a target range to a group input to have control over the displacement strength of the bottom of the branch. I want to have curve length and resolution in the modifiers properties, so I will also add them to the group input. The same as for the trunk, I want to have control over displacement in X and Y axes, so I will add combine XYZ node before the offset. I'll make a duplicate of the noise texture and map range for the Y axis displacement. The displacement strength value should be also shared with both of these map range nodes. I'll add scales of both textures to the group input. Now it's time to rename all of these inputs to easily identify what is what. Now with this setup I can create as many different branches as I want. And for current tree, three branches is more than enough. So I will duplicate this branch two times and play with the settings and the modifier properties to create some variations.
Now I'll hide assets in the viewport and from rendering. And go back to procedural tree geometry nodes. Now I'll delete both curve line and resample curve nodes that were used as branches before. I'll drag branches collection right into the editor and plug its geometry into the instance socket. Nice, but it's a mess. To fix this, I have to select separate children and reset children checkboxes. To display one random object from the collection, there is an option to pick instance. And now I have it. Random branch objects are instance on the trunk curve with all the options I've previously added. I can also add new objects to the collections or edit existing ones and they will appear immediately on the tree. I can even add control for selection of specific object by ID with integer plugged into the instance index socket. Or random value node with integer selected to select a range of objects from the collections by ID. But for this tree, random object from the collection is more than enough, so I'll leave it empty. I also want to be able to select which exact collection to use for my tree. So I'm going to add collection to the group input right here. With a proper name, of course. Now I can select collection from the modifiers properties. Any collection within the project except of the one with the current object in it. Now let's add some juicing to the branch's growth. Let's go back to branch gen geometry nodes. I want to create bending for the branches. For this I'm going to add another set position node before the one with the noise offset and this time I'm going to use vector rotate. I'll plug this vector into the position socket and see that all the branches disappeared. This is because Vector Rotate has a missing vector to work with. So I'm going to add Position node and plug it into the vector socket. Now I can choose what type of rotation do I want to make. After a few experiments, I pick X axis. So to make that smooth bending of the branch, I'm going to rotate each point by some amount of degrees. I take index node, multiply it by some value and plug the result into the angle socket. And the rotation is way too strong. So I'll convert this value to radians to use degrees in my calculations. Now let's test it. What's important is that the more points this branch will have, the stronger banding will be. Now I want to change the banding based on the growth state. But since this is a different geometry nodes and I don't have access to the growth value of the tree, I'm going to make something interesting here. Let's add a value and a map range node. I'm going to set some preliminary target range like from minus 0.5 to 0.5 and plug the result into the bending value right here. Now when this value is 0, the bending value is minus 0.5 and when it's 1, bending value is 0.5. Now I will go to tree gen nodes and in the modifiers properties I will right click on the tree growth slider 
and select copy as new driver. Now I'll go back to the branch gen and in this value right here, I will right click and paste the driver. Now it gets purple color, which means that this value is controlled by the driver. Now let's test it. The stronger the bending values are, the more noticeable this is going to be. So we'll add both minimum and maximum bending values to the group input to set this for each branch asset. To juice branch growing effect even more, I can multiply noise displacement strength values by this value with the driver. I will also apply the same method to the scale of the noise textures. Now I will add a few corrections to the rotation of the branch instances on the trunk until I like it. I will add a few most important options to the group input like where branches start to appear, branches probability, seed, and rotation seed. It is also possible to add any value from this setup, but I won't do that to not overload the modifier's properties. I will add node groups to frames to have everything nice and clean. And it's time to work on the tweaks. I'll create a new collection called tweaks in the assets. Tweaks the way I imagine here, are going to be the same as branches, only smaller. So I will reuse the same geometry nodes, branch gen, to create a few variations of tweaks. Now that I have tweak assets created, I'll go back to procedural tree nodes and will duplicate the whole thing that I made for the branches. I'll disconnect all the inputs here and replace the collection with tweaks. I want tweaks to be instance on points of the branches, so I will use branch curve for points. To see the tweaks, I need to join them with the rest of the geometry. So I can plug this right here into the join geometry. Tweaks appeared on the branches but with a huge offset. This happened because of the Rotate Instances node. In order for this setup to work properly, I would need to realize the instances of branches, which will break the whole scaling logic, which I want to save. 
in this case, I'll have to build rotations for tweaks in a different way. So I'll remove all the rotation nodes here. And disconnect here. I will also connect branches captured attribute process by map range and float curve into scale and make a few adjustments to the width of the tweaks to have a better visual representation. Let's remove align oiler to vector and curve tangent nodes. I will save randomization of rotation on the z-axis and reconnect combine xyz into the rotation socket of instance on point. Now I want to create similar effect as for the branches. Weeks that are located at the end of the branch should be tilted more forward than the ones closer to the trunk. So I will add map range node with captured branch attribute connected into the value socket and plug it into the Y axis of the combine XYZ. Now I will convert this to radians and set the proper range for rotation in the target range of the map range node. It is time to test how it works all together. A cool thing here that I can change resolution of the branch which automatically bring more tweaks on this branch. Which can be also increased or decreased with different settings. Now what is left is to connect all necessary inputs into the group input for easy access. Values like tweaks, collection, stop position, probability, etc. And that is all for episode 2 of Procedural Trees with Geometry Nodes tutorial. In the next and final episode, I'm going to show you how to add leaves to this tree and also create stylized materials in EV Render. So I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.